So one thing that I think is confusing here is there's lots of different halogenation reactions, and it's really hard. It, it, people really tend to get them all confused. So maybe I'll erase this now. Do you guys have this in your notes? Does when it says HBr dark, does that just mean don't no think? No light. Does that just mean don't think cal radical halogenation? Right. Okay. So let's see. Number A was NBS. Now this here is just the solvent. So what reaction should we think of here? Radical allylic halogenation. Okay. So notice, this, um, you need a double bond in order for this to work, but we're not attacking the double bond. We're attacking the allylic carbon. But if there wasn't a double bond, it wouldn't be an allylic carbon. So that was A. Um, now, uh, how about uh, C? HBr. So the fact that it's dark indicates that we're not going to do a radical mechanism. They're trying to uh, eliminate any extra energy that would cre create radicals. So who would HBr attack? What would be a normal um, functional group at this? This is one of the main reactions in the course. What would be? Just the alkene. Yeah. So this would probably be an alkene. And then it's, it's being attacked by HBr. Okay. This would be our normal Markovnikov addition to an alkene. And the fact that it's dark indicates that we know we're not going to do any radical mechanisms. Even if they didn't say dark, though. Um, as long as they don't give you an extra source of energy, like um, light or a radical initiator like peroxides, we would think that this is just a normal addition. Okay. So the main reaction here would be to attack the alkene. Um, also, we should look at E. Who could we attack with the reagent in E? Now, this would be a way to put two bromines on. And I, one would we use I when you're ready. To add it to the least situation. What type of functional group would it attack? Good. Now, that's good that you remember that. A lot of people would forget that. Um, this is very similar to C. You can see we've got HBr in both cases. But remember that without the radical mechanism, it's Markovnikov. And the bromine ends up on the more substituted carbon. With the radical mechanism, the peroxides will cause us to have a radical mechanism here. With the radical mechanism, it's going to be anti-Markovnikov. And the bromine will end up on the less substituted carbon. Well, this is, uh, uh, we talked about how you need to write down all the major reactions, and it's helpful to put them in groups. So this is a very helpful group. Students have a hard time telling the difference between all these types of halogenation. So it's really good to have them all in one place. Maybe we should add this. This is the reaction we saw previously. This one up here. Okay, so if you just use the Br2 and heat or light, you can attack uh, something with no functional groups. And that would tend to put the bromine on the more substituted carbon. Bromine is selected for the more substituted carbon. Now, notice what does NBS mean? NBS, this term, is only used for allylic halogenation. So when you see NBS, you should be thinking of allylic halogenation, which does not attack the double bond. Instead, it attacks the allylic carbon. Then we have two different ways that HBr can attack a double bond. HBr can attack the double bond Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov. So here's the two um, outcomes there. And those, those do destroy the double bond, because here we're attacking the double bond, unlike here, where we were attacking the allylic carbon. Uh, and finally, we have something else, another way to attack a double bond with Br2. 
then again, we've gotten rid of the double bond and put a bromine on both of the carbons. So it's a really good idea to make flashcards of these reactions or have them all on the same piece of paper and drill, drill ourselves on not getting these confused with each other. Well, NBS means the radical allylic halogenation. By the way, why do we need a special reagent here? Remember that, uh, why can't we just put in Br2? Well, if we just put in a bunch of Br2, we would get this reaction, right? If you have Br2, this would just attack here. Um, what the NBS does is it gives us a slow, steady stream of a small amount of Br2. If you only have a small amount of Br2 at any one time, it turns out that that favors the allylic mechanism. But if you just dump in a whole bunch of Br2, you would just get a halogenation of the double bond. Well, we can just memorize the difference between these two cases. <laughs>